Hey, welcome to part nine. Um, I just want to show you what we're going to be doing. This is that basic service bridge I built for that sewer canal. Uh, it is basically just granny grading some bits off of uh, platformers, I think is the name of the uh, uh, kit, and uh, styrene and some. Uh, um, see, I scratched it up already, so I'm going to have to touch up a little bit with some primer, maybe, or we'll just paint over it, see what happens. And that's going to be glued in eventually, and that's going to be for a couple minis to stand on. So uh, let me show you uh, what we're to come and uh, use on this and uh, give you kind of a, like a parts list. Be back in a second. Okay, there, come back. Um, what we're going to do is try to do some, uh, what we're going to do is some rust effects um, as a base coat. We're going to start with a, a light purple. I know that's funky, but it does give us some depth. Um, this is kind of a rusty, ready brown. A uh, little we'll bit of a, an orange, hazard orange by Minotaur. And then we have, um, uh, this is amber, so it's kind of like, a, you know, we're going to use this very sparingly just to kind of highlight the uh, orange parts, because obviously this is old rust and newer rust. Then we're going to go with the satin varnish after that from Liquitex to protect everything. Then go in with the heavy chipping fluid. I know you don't have to do the chipping fluid um, or the uh, varnish before chipping fluid on their, according to their instructions, but I do recommend it. It makes your life a little bit easier. I'm going to attempt, I know a lot of people have bad things to say about the Minotaur uh, Metallics. I'm going to mix a couple of these up together. Uh, some uh, Brass Monkey and some uh, Gun Alloy to give like kind of a bronzy color. We'll see how that works. I mean, we can go and fix it later on. And that's going to be coated on top of it. And then we will go back with a, uh, a toothbrush or whatever kind of brush you want and cause a chipping on it. So it looks like the corrosion is eating away at the metal from uh, and causing that layering. So it'll give us actually a, a real good 3D effect. And I may go in later on with a fine brush and do some highlighting besides that. Then when um, that is all done, we'll go in with the, uh, that's what I have on this little camera here. Uh, there we go. We got some uh, oil paint. And this is some turpenoid. We'll make up some washes and do an oil wash on it to really, really make the details pop out and go from there um this will be a long part possibly hopefully not uh we'll see what happens uh you can't hang in there there's gonna be you know uh no hurt feelings uh, i know everyone's time is very valuable so uh we'll be back and get started on this okay we are back i got the i guess it's called ecky moss it's kind of a purpley color oh it's so you can see some of this laying down yeah see it's purpley i'm gonna try to get some really fine lines with this put this uh Airbrush through its paces with a 0.2. Probably running about a 15. Kind of runs wiggles around it. Actually, I'm not digging that at all. Bear with me. Let me get this uh, pressure down a little bit more. Let's see. We can see that now. Yeah, we got a little more control now. And just don't be afraid. You know, the little less pressure, the better. There we go. I'm, gonna, I'm using actually the uh, needle restrictor on the back so I can just kind of not think about it. See that works better. Mm 
There we go. Um, also, I've learned with Minotaur paints, don't use thinners. Use straight distilled water. I have a little uh, tattoo water bottle with it in. Um, I've had such bad experiences using the alcohol mixture with water, and it uh, causes a lot of speckling. And I thought it was just bad paint. No, it's just certain paints have certain ways to do things. This is kind of another beginner level paint job, just squir squiggling crap around. This is going to give us a, maybe underneath a more purple in there. Give some depth. That's it. Looks like this uh, primer and it scrapes off, mixed up with that. That's working. off camera. I don't want to move the camera around too much. Put that back in the center there. Um, just move it with, uh, let me just orange just so it shows up a little bit better. And this paint goes a long way. So it's a couple drops in your barrel. So I have three drops of paint and this a little bit of washing what I'm going to use. I have some still water in a one of these, uh, especially when you're doing small details. Uh, those tattoo bottles sometimes get out of control, so I can actually just do like two drops of water for three drops of paint, and uh, let's go in here and see how that looks. There we go. Well, maybe too much. And also, your paints are all different too. So one paint that's a little more stubborn and a little thicker uh, might be just the pigment itself. And this is uh, more to like a wash, but it's okay, we'll go back over it. But see how it's giving it that depth now? It's starting to almost get, get a little bit of rust in there. See, I got that area right there, all these airbrushed. They're dried off, kind of blow it out of the way. This area of the once. Yeah, this paint is a little too thin, but we'll work with it. We're doing rust, we're not doing heavy detail. And then uh, let's get some of this. Uh, Amber flowing through there. Okay. We can go back and forth of these colors just to get the kind of a mix you want and the, what you feel like it should look like. And then here's the amber again. Let's see if we bring the amber a little bit back. A little more. So I'm kind of just doing using this in the practice palette area. You can see this color. I'm not thinning this one out at all. Let's see, we're already having. Well, let's see how it works. We'll go back in. It swirls. This is going to do very lightly. We don't have too much yellow in this. I just give it some uh, different uh, color contrasts. See if we can get really close. Get some squiggly. So uh, let me go grab that phone and I'll be back in a second. 
Alexia. And Sorry about that. That was just a quick little phone thing I had to deal with. Um, as you can see now, went from that black with the kind of zenith uh, gray highlighting, and we got, you see the purple in there? That's going to give it a lot more depth. And uh, let's see what we're doing here. This yellow. Because remember, we're going to hit this in oil wash. This will cut this all back. And I'm probably gonna go with the layer. I gotta go with the browns now. That's the real old rust. And we're kind of using the uh, purple as a as a backdrop. So here, then again, I'm just running uh, some water. I'll tell you what I'm doing in the back and see what I'm doing here. Okay, there we go. So I just have a, a little tattoo. Uh, this is, I believe, an eight ounce bottle. And just uh, fill this up with water, dump it, uh, run a t-shirt through it. I have a couple t-shirts tied to the, the booth. And they'll get to a point where they get filthy. I'll just get some new ones and throw these away. And make sure this cleaned out. This is a little, these are a little harder to clean out than the Badgers. They have a lot of depth inside the uh, barrel. They hold a lot of paint. And it's not that you can get to them like what they um Patriot 105 or even the Sotar. The needle, you have a lot of access to the needle from the top, and it's a lot easier to clean. So uh, my recommendation, if you ever needed just two airbrushes, which probably all you ever need, probably a Sotar and a, um, this is Sotar Fine, and then get the Patriot 105, as we have up here, and get the different needles for that, and that could be your, that's your workhorse always. If you can only get two airbrushes, look for Sotars, they're usually Two to three hundred bucks, but occasionally you see it for eighty bucks or a hundred dollars on Amazon. That's a really great deal. Make sure you get the quick releases for them, so they're easy to get on and off your compressor. I'm fortunate to have. Um, let's see if I can take you off the thing right now. I'm kind of gabbing here, sorry, but I'm kind of uh, having fun doing this today. I haven't done a lot of videos until just recently. That is my. Uh, this is an old school uh, Badger uh, Million Air which is still the Silent Air weight A20, I believe. Uh, Badger no longer uh, rebadges it and sells it anymore, so I got this at a good deal on eBay. And as you can hear, it's very quiet. It sounds like a uh, aquarium um, compressor. I probably said it in other videos. Apologize if I have been repeating myself. But it's a great little compressor. I got running two hoses off of it. And I saw my old compressor there, on a, I think on a nice day or on a sunset, if I want to go paint on the deck. Throw some uh, newspaper up on the uh, patio table and take it downstairs. And I got an uh, airbrush going down there also. Let's go back, put you back on the iPod, the iPod, the uh, tripod. Okay, I'm going to go in now with the uh, bloodstained mud. I like the name of this color. And I didn't clean this out completely, but uh, as you can see, nothing's coming out of it. With a couple of drops is probably all we need. There's three, and this is supposed to be this paint's really, um, usually really thin. I just that one I had trouble with, but this one's really good. So this is like a reddish brown, which is perfect for the rust we're trying to do. Long camera here. I'm just doing figure eights and S's. I know that a lot of that purple we used to cover up the uh, uh, mistakes. I think I know. I'm going to hit this side with the other paint. So I'm going to have to come back in here with the oranges again. Get in really tight so we get nice detail. Get out of that. I'm going to go back to the uh, Hazard Orange. I'm not going to clean it out. Let's see if we can just uh, blow these colors through. This is the one I had uh, trouble earlier, or I thinned it too fast. And then we'll see if we can see me over here. There we go. We're going to get in really tight again.
There we go. And I'm just going to throw the yellow on top of that, not even clean it out. So I start kind of blending it and getting the different little tones. There we go. So I'm going to get in there tight, pull. So I think we we're at where we want to be. I may, I think the other one is too much. We're gonna go in and um, get some splotchiness going on. Right, and you see this part; it'll be glued down eventually. I think we got something that looks kind of rusty. It's got like an old like a uh, iron rust. So uh, we're gonna go back and uh, satin varnish it, and then we'll go from there. As usual, thank you for joining me, and we'll see you in the next section. Okay, we're back. I'm just gonna show you how I just varnish it real quick, real simple. I got the satin varnish in the background here. I got the Patriot 105 set up. I have the um, uh, paint booth on on full blast. Uh, varnishes are very fine particles and you don't want to breathe this stuff. I've done it before and you just don't feel right after doing it, <laughs> which you shouldn't. But there's something about... I'm going to get a little more pressure on this. Yeah. Since we're not doing so much detail, I need to get push this varnish out. There we go. Trying not to get it mucked up with my hand too much, but I'm going to try to help speed it along here. Brought my trusty hair dryer out. Going to help cure it a little bit faster. You see all the different color variations we have now. Whoa. Actually, that was not good. This <laughs> melted something. Oh, no. Yeah, maybe not use a hair dryer. Uh, this uh, styrene went really limp fast. Oh no. Um, it's okay though. We're still we're still safe. Um, load up some more for the bottom. I have run some paper or glue in there. I just varnish that in there. Hold that down. A little bend to this too now. Shoot. I'm actually, I can fix that with the hair dryer later. Oops. Gotta be careful of getting too sporadic with the uh, airbrush. Might be a little paint in there too. I just a little spots for that. Well, I'm just not gonna bore you with this. I'm gonna uh, touch it up a little bit, see if I can hair dry that side back up a little bit, and then. Um, We'll be back in a few. Thanks. Okay, I'm, I am back. I wanted to add a little more contrast to this. So I pulled out some um, orange fire from Vallejo, threw it on this little palette over here. You can see that. Let me scoot it on the other side. And then we're going to uh, just uh, sponge it on. It's going to give it more of a, uh, you know how rust looks? This is, I just don't, I want a little more contrast with it. This is uh, orange, is like a newer rust. And uh, do remember, we're going to oil wash this, so it's going to tone it all down. Yeah. 
Let me see how it's kind of bringing it out. And yeah, please. A lot of times when you're doing these miniatures and you do oil washes on this stuff, um, you really want to kind of over exaggerate it, do a cartoony uh, amount. And then the oil wash, or uh, also people call it a filter, will filter it down and blend it into uh, the other colors around it since you're uh, you know adding a color on top of it, technically. And the oil wash could be um, you know left on and blended, or you can wipe it off completely. So it gives you a lot of control of what you're doing. We got these edges. We'll be fresh there. Probably have some like metal on there too. Eventually, do some. Um, uh, probably bring in another thing. Uh, do some lead pencil. So uh, wear marks on where the foot traffic has been. So there's not chance for, for rust. It's just bare metal. It's worn down with a. Uh, the uh, traffic through the sewer area. There we go. I think that's even a little bit better. That uh, makes you feel a little more comfortable. So that's it. Just use a pair of these self-closing tweezers and a piece of blister pack. And I'm going to hit it again with the... Um, no hair dryer now. I had to go in and super glue uh, that granny grating down. I don't know how that separated or when I glued it in on the sides, I didn't glue it in the middle and it was just nice and tight and then we added some heat to it and it expanded. But we're okay again. We're good. So, um, still got this going. Oops. And we clogged the brush, let it sit. Wasn't a good idea. <laughs> So making this cleaned out. So um, I'm just going to get this off camera. Uh, no reason to bore with you that. You saw what I did with the uh, um, varnish before. And we'll see you uh, when we hit up the uh, uh, heavy chipping flu from AK Interactive. And then we'll go from there. Thanks. All right, we're back. And uh, I let the um, satin varnish cure overnight. So it's uh, protected. And then now I'm going to hit it with the... I'm doing a mixture of two uh, effects from AK Interactive. And basically, you can use basic hairspray for this. This gives you a little more control. Um, I do like the heavy chipping better than the worn. I'm doing a mixture of both and see what happens with that. Uh, you can always go back and um, redo it. No big deal with the, uh, the airbrush. I was real fast. So um, I loaded up the Patriot Oil 5. And I'm going to go in with the uh, hair dryer probably to speed this up a little bit, but uh, with no heat on it. So um, let me get that. Then again, because you have small particles again, you want to be breathing this in. Really simple. So I'm going to uh, give this a couple coats, and then we'll be back. I don't want to waste uh, your time on this section, and we'll see you in a second. Thanks. Hey, everyone. We're back. Um, we got everything dry. I took the hair dryer and put it on uh, just cold air and uh, made sure all this... Uh, all the glossiness and the liquid or the wetness dissipated. So we have a couple coats of the worn and heavy chipping effects from AK Interactive on it. Um, I'm doing a custom mix of colors. I just don't I didn't really dig what they have going on with Minotaur. So I'm using um, uh, this is a Minotaur uh, gun alloy, a very little of this brass monkey, and some uh, Raven Black. So I'm kind of making a, a dark iron. And then it'll look like it's rusted under, or rust is eating through it. So I'm going to throw this in the Patriot 105, running really low pressure on this. We'll hopefully have enough to uh, cover it with this, what I'm doing. And I'm going in here, let's see. Very good coverage. That's nice. I just want to give it. A, I don't want to give it too much paint to have to dig through it later on with the uh, wet uh, paint brushes and what other other tools I want to use. What I'm probably going to do is get this top part all done and hit it with a hair dryer, so you can. See the coverage going real quick. I'm gonna finish this off camera and come back. So you got nice 
iron looking bridge and uh, I'll be back in a second with it finished and then we'll uh, uh, chip it. Hi, right, we are back. I have got uh, three tools I'm going to work with. I have an uh, Army Painter Stibble Brush, very stiff brush. I have, um, I believe this is like a, an eraser. So you have like a, a good uh, solid rubber tip and I have an old toothbrush. And I have some water off camera. So let's just try the toothbrush first. We're going to try the bottom. And um, let's see how we do. thing. Try the stippling brush a little bit. So I can see it coming back. I want to do too too much. Then also we can go in later on if we want to add if the rust is not exactly what we want. Go back in and do like do that sponge technique like I did with the orange earlier. And let's get this all saturated. And also I'm gonna use uh, soft lead pencils to do worn marks where uh, rust wouldn't be able to accumulate when you have uh, foot traffic and hand traffic over places. This is a nice tool. I have a lot of rust under here because of the close to the water. I'm kind of just saturating it with a little bit of uh, water first, then going in with the brushes. Let's have a bunch. Uh, so the time the uh, the water can react underneath. I'm going to get this foaming thing, just go in with a rag or a t-shirt and just blot it off. I kind of like this mixture. It's uh, not, it's almost, it is a little more worn or more chipping effects and worn effects, but I'm getting a little more control than I usually do. Now that's looking really good. Let's get this going. So I think we're good. Uh, that turned out pretty nice. It still has that dark iron look to it, and we have the rust uh, all appearing on it. And I think it's really that's what we're going for. I'm gonna uh, hit this with a hair dryer real quick. We'll come back. Um, uh, I'll do some uh, the detailing with the uh, soft pencil, and then we'll uh, do an oil brush or oil wash on it. Oil brush, and I'll see you in a second. Thanks. Well, off camera, uh, after we did the uh, chipping. I did a uh, anti shine by Arm is Army Painter. Yeah, Army Painter anti shine ran the uh, the booth at full force, so I got all the fumes sucked out. So this has got another protecting I uh, protected what's done on it, so nothing else can be chipped. Uh, you see, we got the rust effect we were looking for, and we still have that still iron look to it. Very uh, I'm very happy with that what it turned out. I want to do some worn uh, areas like where people will be gripping it and stepping all the time. So um, I have, uh, let me can read that, semi-hex uh, graphic drawing pencils. Um, I'm going to use a softer lead 
So that's a 6B or a 5B. Here's a 4B. Here's a 5B. Let's try a 5B. Let's see if we can do this on camera. So like areas like this, where you can see um, this rush wouldn't really be there because you can just then blend that in, and especially edges. That'd be really worn. This kind of brings back some of that iron color and maybe some of these edges here. Use your finger to blend it. This adds another uh, detail. This is another thing you'd like to do on tanks uh, for areas where you have a lot of crew going in and out of hatches and things. And you can imagine like this railing would have a little bit of uh, like glove traffic and stuff to kind of wear it down over time. We have workmen in the sewer as this display board is kind of depicting. So you wouldn't really have a lot of rust on those areas where there's a lot of wear and tear. It'd just be uh, wearing down to the bare metal constantly. Let me get in here. Remember we're gonna blend all this with your finger. Then uh, the oil wash will kick all this back a little bit too. You can see some of my cutting wasn't too good on that grating, but that's okay. So you know on these handrails, since there would be hands there all the time, there wouldn't be barely any rust. It'd be just all this worn down shiny metal. Down here it wouldn't do any of that because this would be just um, subject to the moisture, so you have a lot of rust and the metal coming through. You'd have rust around the bolts because you're obviously the boot wouldn't. So I think that's it. We don't need to do a lot of this stuff. I'm just kind of do random footfall areas on the grating. And that'll be it on that. And then we'll come back and do an oil wash on it. Um, thanks for joining me. See you. Yeah, before we uh, go further with the uh, bridge and finish it off, I just wanted to show you what, uh, get a good look to it. I like how the, um, the met, you know, the metallics are contrasting uh, with the, um, obviously this is all primered still. This is not even nearly done. And I think there's gonna be some stark differences here. I might do like a light concrete, then we'll do the cobblestone. And this will be a darker hewn stone. So uh, we'll be back in a second and we're going to do the oil wash on this real quick. See so you. Well, we'll finish up on the bridge here. Not finish up, but uh, get the oil wash done. What you see I have in the middle here, I'm just using odorless turpenoid. I have actually, this is also my clean one. I've been cleaning the brush in it, so it's a little more in there. And I have this section right here next to the two colors. That's going to be where the wash is going to be made. And I kind of want to do like a dark brownish black. So we'll just throw some black in there and then we'll get some big chunk of brown. Let's see how that looks as a wash. I think that's kind of almost like a Devlin mud, but in an oil base. A little more brown. I'm probably need more food, uh, wash or um, turpenoid. Um, I keep the big bottles, but I like having control and less waste this way. Just control. Your, it, I love dropper bottles for everything I use. Um, it's just so much more control and yeah, less waste and uh, easy to transport too. When you're uh, going to your game shop and stuff, you have these little bottles and just refill them when you get back to your uh, man cave or studio, or whatever you want to call it. Let's get in this a little closer. Let's see, we get this. 
And we're going to let this dry, then we're going to clean it up a little bit too. And I want to especially get into these uh, stanchions, I guess you'd call these. And let them absorb the color. Let the pigment get into them. See how they're already popping? And uh, you can use a uh, some air on this too. Actually, this is going to get kind of sloppy, but um, I should probably use a smaller brush. There we go. Let's take your rag and dab it. See, it already took it off. So you want to get uh, you want the appropriate brush to use. Wash well, might be a little thin, but we'll work with it. It's really going to knock back that orange too, but we're going to clean this off when it dries. You let the capillary action, capillary action, always hard to uh, use that word. And you can see there's so much little detail that this will bring out to bring a little more interest to the piece. These little uh, stanchion things, you want those darkened up a little bit. So, let me see it start to get way more details popping a lot better. So we can get in there. I might have to thicken this wash a little bit. But we can just do, uh, go and clean it up and do it over and over again. So I am not going to bore you with this. And this is one thing I knocked the paint off. But that will be uh, always a little, I don't want to do too much, don't do too much detail down here. But um, I like to get that just to make those rivets pop. Maybe getting this detail where the uh, uh, iron is overlapping. Let's give it some uh, more detail and depth. Oh, gravity, I have this thing tilted, so I know gravity's gonna work with this. Assuming it's okay so far. So I'm going to uh, work on this for a second. I'll be back and show you what it looks like and then clean it up a little bit. See you then. Okay, we're back. So you see now I got the oil wash in. And I'm just going to uh, take a little bit of it off. I'm taking a um, common like Walmart or dollar store um, cosmetic sponge. I'm going to saturate it with some clean um, terpenoid. Don't need a lot. And I kind of want to uh, maintain like shadowing with the wash. So I'm going to just do like a quick wipe down. You can see it's pulling some of this off. And also I said uh, Devlin Mud, but nowadays I don't, no one uses Devlin Mud anymore. It's uh, Agrass Earthshade, more kind of like the color I made. I'm trying to do the little bit in there. And kind of clean these uh, bolts off because there's not grease on these. These are just old. So you just want to maintain that, you get that detail to pop out still. Stay on camera here. Sorry about that. We got it. Down here real quick. And uh, we're done. Um, I think I like that way it turned out. I don't know if I need to highlight it anymore. I think it looks good for what it is, a display base. Um, you could go in and um, maybe highlight some of the orange and stuff like that to make it pop a little more. But uh, this, as I said, this is a display base. I could go in and maybe um, shine up some of the bolts or put some more uh, rust on them. But I think I like it the way it turned out. Make sure the rust shows through and it's got that just the grittiness. So it looks like it's, it's like a subterranean little utility bridge. And it's got to do, it's going to do the job that I want it to. A little bit clean up. And you're going to see little spots as you go through it. You may just want to clean up a little bit or I can always go back and add more wash. But I think 
That is bringing back all the detail I want. We're good. So uh, I'm going to um, hit it with a um, probably rattle can varnish to seal it up and um, a matte coat, and then we're done. And uh, maybe we'll go on to the next part. Thanks for joining me.